Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you a game between Grandmaster Livio di Nisipiano from Germany and Grandmaster Maxime Vachier Lagrave from France. In the past Nisipiano played for Romania but since 2014 he's playing for Germany. This game was played in Batumi Chess Olympiad round 9. Let's analyze the game from the point of view of opening, middle game and end game. In the opening we need to develop our pieces, make castle and connect the rooks by moving the queen. White started with e4 and black replied with c5. We have the Sicilian opening and Maxim played the knight door variation which is his favorite bad line against e4. Knight to f3, d6, d4 attack in the center, c takes on d4, knight takes on d4, knight to f6, attacking the pawn, defending the a6. This is the knight of radiation and this a6 pawn controls b5 square not allowing white knights to jump there or the bishop. Next, white should develop his bishops following the principle of the maximum activity. The dark square bishop should go to g5 and the light square bishop to c4. In the game, white played bishop to e3. Knight to g4. This is a mistake. Moving the same piece in an opening is not a good idea. In this position, white has three pieces developed, while black only one. A good move for black would have been to play e5, bishop to e7, and castle. In the game, white moved the bishop to g5, a6, attacking the bishop one more time, and white put it back to c1. Another way was to put the bishop on h4, preventing e5, knight to f6, bringing the knight back, it's move 8 for black and he moved this knight 3 times. Bishop to c4, developing another piece, e6, a pawn move that blocks the light square bishop but allows the dark square bishop to come to e7 and then black will castle. Bishop to b3, bishop to e7, bishop to e3, developing the last minor piece, knight to c6, developing and attacking the knight from d4. We have tension between the pieces and this tension should be maintained unless it gives an advantage. White can continue his development with castle but in the game he took on c6 creating an isolated pawn on a6, queen to f3, placing the queen on the most forward square on the king side signaling that he wants to play long castle. Black should continue development with castle but he played queen to c7, queen to g3, a good move, attacking g7. As we know in any position we should develop our pieces or prevent our opponent to develop. Black cannot castle due to bishop to h6 winning a pawn and in this position black can defend g7 by playing h5 and if white takes this pawn he will lose his queen. Let's see that line with h5, queen takes, rook to g8, queen to h6, rook to g6, queen to f4, e5, and white queen has two squares on f3 or h4. Let's see the first one with queen to f3, we have bishop to g4, queen to g3, h4, queen takes on h4, knight to h5, attacking the queen, and the queen is lost. Let's see the other line, where the queen goes to h4, rook to g4, Queen to h3, rook takes on e4, queen to f3, bishop to g4, queen to g3, h4, queen takes on h4, knight to h5, and in this position white has to give the queen for the bishop and the rook. So these lines are not good for white. In the game he played bishop to b7, ignoring g7 pawn. This is a free pawn and white did not take it. Instead he finished his opening by playing long castle. White didn't want it to take this pawn because after rook to g8, queen takes on h6, black can take on g2, white will be a pawn up, but this pawn from h2 is isolated and in the same time a passed pawn. But with all the pieces on the board it's hard to push it. Maybe a computer will keep this extra pawn and win. White continue with long castle, the opening phase is done. And the middle game begins. In this phase of the game the plan is different. We need to start attacking opponent weaknesses which are weak pawns and weak squares on the 5th and on the 6th rank. And after we detect all these weaknesses we need to involve all our pieces into the attack. In this position black has an isolated pawn on a6 and a backward pawn on g7. c6 and d6 pawns are connected but if one of them moves the other one will remain a backward. For example c5, d6 will be weak and if we'll have d5, c6 will be a backward pawn. Weak squares on this position we have on 
a5, b6 and h5. If black pushes g6 to protect this square, he will create new weaknesses, the one from f6 and a6 will become a weak pawn. So in this position, white targets are a5, b6, c6, d6, g7 and h5. Regarding the pieces, the queen pressures g7, the rooks can double on the d-file, putting pressure on d6. The bishop from e3, it's well placed, looking at both sides of the board. The light score bishop can go to a4 or c4, putting pressure on a6 and c6. The knight from c3 can jump to a4 and then look to infiltrate on b6. So this is the plan for the current position. As we see in the middle game, we need to invest some time to find a plan that involves finding opponent weaknesses and then see how to attack them. Also, we need to modify this plan every time we have a change in material or pawn structure. Let's see the game continuation. Black played g5. g7 was under attack, so this is how he protects this pawn. In any position, we should be very careful with pawn moves because they create new weaknesses. In our case, h6 becomes a backward pawn. Black could have defended this uh, g7 pawn with uh, knight to h5, rook to g8 or king to f8. Since we have a change in uh, pawn structure, we need to update our middle game plan. White can try to undermine this uh, pawn by playing h4, which happened in the game. Black took White recapture with the rook and h6 is attacked twice. Black played long castle, giving up this pawn, recaptured and bishop takes on a6. In this position, white is a pawn up and he can create in the future a pass pawn on the g-file. This is a good advantage for white. Black continue with c5. This pawn move attacks e4 for a second time, but in the same time d6 is a weak backward pawn. White can defend e4 by playing f3, creating a pawn chain in front of the light square bishop, but in the game he played e5. White is returning the pawn back in order to create more weaknesses, and black takes it. It takes on e5, and we can see that white has three pawn islands. a6, c5, e5, and f7 are black weaknesses. White has two pawn islands, and these pawns are connected. Why continue with rook takes on d8, rooks are exchanged, bishop to c4, improving the bishop position, looking at a6, knight to d5, attacking the knight from c3, and white cannot take because he will fix black pawn structure. That's why in the game white defended the knight with bishop to d2, maintaining the tension, and if black takes, white could recapture, putting more pressure on e5 pawn. King to b8, queen to g8, infiltrating on the last rank, putting pressure on the bishop and a pawn from f7, king to a7, knight to a5, attacking c5, and white is not threatening to take this pawn, because after the queen recapture and white queen takes the bishop, black queen will take another piece. So we have queen to e7, b3 defending the bishop, so now white threatens to take this pawn, black played knight to b6, forcing the knight exchange. Instead, black could have gone after white weaknesses with queen to f6. In the game, we have knight takes on b6, bishop takes on b6, and we have an endgame position with queens and bishops on the board. The plan in this phase of the game is to attack upon weak pawns and for us to push our pass pawns. We already know black weaknesses, which are isolated pawns from a6 and c5, double pawns from e file and the backward pawn from f7. White can create a pass pawn on the g file. In the game, queen to g7 was played, attacking e5. Black can defend this pawn with bishop to c8, but in the game he pushed this pawn forward to e4 and the light score bishop defends this pawn. In this position, f7 can be attacked one more time with bishop to e2 and bishop to h5. 5, but white played g4, intending g5, g6, taking advantage that f7 is pinned. Bishop to d5, black wants to exchange bishops, g5, queen to b7, the queen is protected now, bishop to e3, defending f2, and black to c 4 
inflicting white some weaknesses. A5, a move that blocks the dark square bishop but allows the king to hide on a6. A4 stops a5 to advance but this is a weak pawn that can be attacked by black with queen to d7. Black continue with queen to c7. The queen is still defended but this queen move leaves e4 pawn unprotected and white attacks it with queen to a7, queen to b7 defending again and white cannot play g6 because black will capture, white queen will take and white queen can defend this e6 pawn. So there is no advantage for white in this position. So when attacking moves are not working, we need to improve the activity of our pieces. So in the game, white set up a small trap for black. White would love to apply the second uh, plan that we have in an endgame to push his pass pawn. And for this, he would like to take this f7 pawn. And for this, he plays king to d1, queen to d7 check, attacking a4. And if black queen takes this pawn, white will take on f7. King to e1, black took the bait, white capture on f7. White is three squares until he will get the new queen. King to a6, queen to a6, queen takes on c2. And white cannot push g6 for the moment because black queen can draw by checking white king. Queen to b1 check and anywhere the king goes, the queen comes back to d3 so we'll have a draw that's why white queen needs to control this file in order to block black checks in the game he did this with queen to c8 check king to a7 queen to d7 check king to a6 so white can stop any black check and he can continue to push his pawn forward but in the game he played queen to d5 which is a mistake in an endgame, we need to push our pass pawns as soon as our opponent let us. In this case, pushing the pawn was possible. Black plays king to a7. Black only chance was to try to check white king. And with this king move, black allows white king to run away from any check. Instead, white pushed g6. White played a4. He wants to reach a1 square, promote to a rook and mate white king. White saw this and he played king to f1, a good preventing move. The king can run. a3, g7, a2. And here white promoted to a queen. But he could have mated black with king to g2. If black promotes to, to a queen, we'll have queen to d7 check, king to a6, g8 queen, threatening mate on a8. And if the king tries to run on a5, we'll have queen to b5 mate. So black cannot stop mate. Instead in the game he promoted the pawn to a queen. Queen to d3, check, king to g2, queen takes, queen takes. Black gets a new queen. Queen to d7, check, king to a6. And here white noticed that he can win both black pawns by sacrificing his bishop. Queen to b5, check, king to a7, queen takes on c5, check, queen to d5, check, king to b6, queen takes on e4. White is two pawns up and he should win here. Black can try to check white king, but uh, these checks will run out at some point. In the game we had queen to g7 check, king to f3, queen to f6 check, king to f4, queen to c6 check. And after king to e3, black resigned. Let's see a possible continuation. Queen to e6 check, king to d4, queen to d7 check, king to c3 and black doesn't have any good checks because queen to g7 check will run into queen to d4 check forcing the queen exchange and with two extra pawns white will win so this was the game between grandmaster livio diterni cipiano from germany and grandmaster maxim vacher lagra from france i hope you found this video useful please watch other games from my channel and leave some comments and suggestions in the comments section see you next time bye